Hey, what's up, Liron here. Today, we're gonna learn the secret to painting uh, cast shadows in watercolor and, and shadows in general, honestly. So this is something a lot of people have trouble with. And I wanna share with you one aspect today, and that is the shape of the shadow, okay? We're not gonna focus as much on value, but more of the shape and the edge. So this is actually inspired by uh, Carla's beautiful paintings that uh, she shared with us. Uh, for one of the live streams of the critiques. And what I gave her as feedback was, everything is, per this one is perfect, right? And this one's beautiful too. But the thing that caught my attention was the shadows shapes. So let me show you something. The way the shadows cast and their shape is gonna be greatly influenced, and let me actually get a pen here, is gonna be greatly influenced by the shape of the road, the surface on which they cast. And what would often happen, especially with these kinds of roads, is maybe there is this kind of uh, bump in the shape of the road due to cars going over it, right? And sorry for drawing all over your painting, Carla, uh, but I do want to demo this. So if there is a bump here, a hill, something that goes with this shape, and then it straightens out and then it goes bump again, which is very common, or sorry, the other way around, right? A dip and then another dip due to car tires or something like that, and that's gonna influence the shadow. And so instead of them going like this, you'll get something like that, or maybe something like that, right? Depending on which way it goes. And that'll be a very consistent pattern uh, in the light and shadow. And then for the second one, I give this and don't worry, I'm gonna demo this in just one second, for the same, the same critique, right? It looks like the trees are on a hill. So what I would expect to see is this kind of a very gentle maybe curve and then straightening as it gets down over the hill, right? Now, this brings us to a very important concept and that's the crux of this video. With cast shadows, it's much more important to use them to uh, express the, sh the shape of the surface on which they cast rather than the object that casts them. And I'm gonna show you why in just a second. But let's look at this reference photo here. Can you see how the snow has a shape? It goes something like, and then I'm gonna paint it for you. Uh, it goes something like in that direction and then bump down and then it continues like that. And that's due to this road, snowy road, having this sort of a step in it. Can you see this kind of a step? Now the shadows are gonna react to that so most of them appear like so. And then another one, maybe thinner one, and it's gonna follow that same pattern. Okay? Something like that. And that's very important to have in mind. So let's paint this real fast. I just wanna demo the point for you. And I'm gonna leave this reference photo here. And because this is beautiful snow, we can really just Paint it, paint the blue, beautiful blue. Uh, and then, so it's gonna be, uh, which one? I lost my line, so this is one, right? And look at how it follows that shape. And something very fun to do and very um, very loose and, and easy going in a way, right? And then you have another thinner shadow follows that same pattern, right? Uh, and the more the, the road has these, again, rubble and shapes, it's gonna influence the shape of the cast shadow. Why? Because what's more important? Um, expressing the surface, not the object casting the shadow. And I'm actually gonna show you this in just one second, why that happens due to perspective. We're gonna talk about that too. Now, one more thing to have in mind is maybe because of the shape of the road, if light comes from the left, this entire thing is gonna be a little darker. Same goes for here. So what you'll end up with is, let me change this a bit, see, a light that shines really strong here uh, on this step, so to speak, and then the shadow, I'm just gonna go a bit wet and wet so that you can actually see some shadows, are gonna be like this, still following the shape, right? Now, of course, this is a sharp bump, usually it will be a more gradual bump, right? But let me show you one more example, right? This cute dog here, same thing, look at the shape of that shadow, very, very important. Look at what happens here. The shadow actually follows that shape. See that bump? And what furthermore, look at this, because it's a bump, there is a shadow on the bump itself, right? So you get something like this, a very nice pattern. So that's something to have in mind. Now because light comes from this direction, again the shadow is uneven because that hill is uneven in its height. So you get these uneven bumps, okay? That's another really cool effect. But overall, 
it's far more important to express the surface. Now what happens when the shadow casts toward you, kind of like in this example, right? Depending on the surface, look at what happens here. You see how the shadow goes, disappears behind a bump, goes over it and continues. So that's gonna look maybe something like this. Maybe this is the bump and then the shadow is gonna come towards us. And people have a tendency to make these diagonals way more extreme than they are. So they'll, they'll go like this. No, it's not as like that because we're looking from a lower angle. I'm gonna show you in just one second. So you see the shadow comes towards us at an angle, right? And then it disappears behind the bump and then it returns right around here. Okay, so this, and if you have multiple shadows, that's gonna be a really cool effect of them disappearing and reappearing. And that way you can express the shape of the bump in the road, whatever it is, sand, street, asphalt, snow, you can express that using your shadows. And that's the greatest thing you can do. Using shapes, you can express the form. That's very important to remember. Let me show you one last example. Same here. Look at how all of these cast shadows are highly influenced by the shape of the snow. Maybe it has these colluses of the car. So when we revisit this example, that's the thing I, I was missing a bit, right? Because these shadows felt a little too flat. You see here, this one follows the shape of the hill really well. But these felt a little too flat. Now, it could be that in the reference photo, there weren't any bumps here, which is why these are. But I would actually add them because I like to add these kinds of details. I think it adds a lot of beauty to the scene. Now, let me show you why this happens. So, let's say we are looking down from above from a, 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 a helicopter or an airplane. And what we see is the ground like this. Now, let's do the same scene, but from an angle. So I'm drawing this same surface, but from a lower angle, right? Something like that. This is the same surface. Now, when a tree or an object casts its shadow like this sideways, right? Not towards us. Let's say the shape of the tree, the tree stands here. And hopefully that makes sense. And it casts a shadow that looks like this. Because the tree is crooked, right? It goes a bit in that direction, kind of like that. So that's gonna be our shadow, right? But when we look at it from an angle and we have that same tree here, will you notice that very mild change? Let's see how it's gonna play out in perspective. The cast shadow is thin and then it goes slightly to the back and it continues. Do you notice? Any of that, that's barely noticeable. When the, sh the shadows go across from us, you'll barely notice things that go in the depth and outside because it all gets squeezed by perspective. And here's proof. Look at this tile versus this tile. Perspective squeezes it. And even if you don't know the rules of perspective, that should help you kind of understand it. Perspective squeezes everything, right? However, if you have a bump in the road, so let's say these tiles, there's a bump here, which by the way, you won't see from above, but let's say it's here, right? The bump in the road goes up towards us, right? This area is beveled towards us. Then you'll really feel that change, right? You'll really see that bump. And if you have other shadows, you'll see them the same way, like this. And look at how almost immediately you can tell you're looking at something that goes up, right? If you want to express a surface that has an uneven surface, right? You can express it like this with these bumps like that. And there's actually great exercise for expressing like a pencil shape, right? Like this, you can do this kind of an exercise. You can imagine a cylindrical pencil, right? And then you can imagine a surface crossing through it like that. And that's actually a great exercise. But that's just, again, goes to show you why this happens, why the shadows are affected by the surface more than the object casting them in this example, the trees, right? Now, one more thing I want us to explore as it relates to cast shadows is the idea of cast versus a change of plane. So what do I mean by that? If you even look right now at my nose, you'll see a gradual transition from light to dark. That happens because the shape of the nose is rounded. And so this side faces the light. And the more you move here, the less it faces the light, the less and less and less, meaning a gradual transition. But a cast shadow, depending on the constellation, it's not always gonna be this way. Cast shadows, however, tend to have 
a bit of a sharper edge. And I want to show you how this can be applied to a nose just like we've seen in that portrait video I, I posted earlier this week, right, I believe. So what happens with noses or any other object, let's say there's a strong sunlight coming through here, that's a nose. And then this is gonna be a gradual transition because the nose is rounded. And this cast shadow, it's a shadow cast by the shape of the nose because of the light coming from here is gonna be sharp, which is why it's important to talk about it because we're talking about cast shadow. So I'm just gonna use a bit of a whatever, a bit of everything I have on the palette here because the color doesn't matter as much. And I'm just gonna show you what will happen is you're gonna get a smooth transition here. So let me pre-wet this a bit, helping the paint move. And you're gonna get a smooth transition around here, around this area. And let me make this a little stronger so that we can see it better. Smooth transition here, and here's a secret tip for you. Tilt it like that if you don't want it to go too much into the edge of that pre-wet shape. And this cast shadow, however, is gonna have a sharp edge. And it's this combination of sharp versus loose and smooth transitions in the, in the shadows that creates a lot of the beauty and it's definitely something you wanna make use of, okay? So just wanted to show that as kind of an extra tip, bonus tip, transition shadows that are on the subject due to a change of plane, like on my nose, as opposed to a shadow being cast by an object that tends to stay a little sharper. I hope all of this makes sense. I want to thank you so much. Don't forget to drop a like and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts and also subscribe if this is my first video that you ever watched and thank you so much for that. And also do not forget to check out links to my courses in the description box below. If you want to let go and you feel stifled with watercolor then frustration free watercolor is your answer. Uh, if you want to go for realism I have the watercolor realism course. If you're struggling with drawing it as you see it I have my draw anything course that's been getting a lot of I've been getting a lot of good emails about that. Also check out the gallery, check out the Patreon if you want one-on-one -on -one critiques with me. Thank you so much. We'll see you again in the next vid real soon.